Director for the Hope Area Transition Society. I'm Paul Kelly, the Homeless Program Coordinator for the Thunder Road Motel Project. In 2008, we received funding from BC Housing to um, begin a program called the Homeless Outreach Program, at which time we were to work with our clients who were homeless or at risk of homeless, try to find them housing. That was primarily the purpose for that program and as a result of that what what Paul discovered in just finding people housing is they weren't really dealing with some of their issues that they needed to deal with we were getting them housing and then they were turning around and becoming homeless yet again as I looked around our community we realized that there's a few motels that are quite old and they rented the clientele anyway three four five clientele in each motel and particularly in the winter when the summer season is, is all done. They rent to our clientele and soak them for rent, just soak them. And there's no supports there. I'm bumping around all over to these places, um, meeting with people. Really no connection with the landlord who's just taking the money. Really no connection with the client because their lives are so sporadic and chaotic. They're going all the time. It's shifting every day. And I'm really not getting a clear understanding of really what's that underlying issue. The owner, Anwar, at uh, the Thunderbird Motel, where some of our clients were currently living already, and um, he had, him and Paul had begun talking about what the potential of what this could look like if we housed all of our clients at the Thunderbird and provided them some support systems that I, Anwar would be more than willing to offer his motel at, basically. So the Thunderbird Motel, it's a three acre piece of property, motel, 25 units. I approached the owner and we had conversation. He was probably running at about 40% capacity. I knew I could probably run him at 90 to 100% capacity. But I wanted access to each resident in a case management style model outreach approach. We would do all the intake, the rental agreement, the discharge if it needed to happen. And the case management work through this office. And the landlord would simply provide the landlord services, which is pay for the heat, the maintenance, the taxes, whatever he normally does. In further discussions with Anwar and his family and, you know, the board, we decided that this is, um, you know, a partnership that we'd like to engage in. Yeah, here we are. Doing our thing. Excuse me. Excuse me. Living life, improving our style. So, um, when we look at the residents, um, each one is asked to maintain self. And again, when we see each other, when we see them two, three, four times a day, you really do get a sense of who's doing well and who isn't, who's maintaining self. And that is a big, that's a big, big job. Maintain self. It, it can be anything, and we keep it open. Uh, we look at them to maintain their unit the second thing. Maintain self, maintain your unit. And these are skills that most we I would take for granted. So we look at maintain self, maintain unit, and contribute. And the reason we want people to contribute is because we need to build this self-worth, this self-esteem. We need to build into their lives some ownership of something. Where can you feel good? Pick something of interest you like to do and do it. So um, every little piece helps, but those are the kind of three criteria we use at the Thunderbird. Um, we expect that. It's a relationship exchange. You do your piece, and we're going to continue to do ours as a support person and seek some funding and try and make life a little bit easier for you while you're in this transition. Well, for Hope, it meets our need, and our need is to take people who are on the streets or at risk of homelessness, which means they're living in conditions that aren't safe or affordable, and putting them into an environment where they may still be actively engaged in their lifestyle of addictions, um, you know, mental health issues. So we're not expecting that by housing them, 
that they're just all of a sudden one day going to be uh, no longer addictive and have their mental health under under control. They still have their issues, their daily battles that they have, um, you know, with life. We feel that with this project, though, we're meeting them where they're at, supporting them in their goals, and working alongside of them to create a quality of life that's benefiting them and keeping them housed. So right in the rental agreement, we will ask the client to identify their barriers and their goals, right? And um, that's the initial stage of getting in. And all you really need to do is um, show us that you're willing to try. That's the low barrier housing I was talking about. If you're willing to try, no matter what you present, as long as I can communicate with you, we want to give you a try. Our barrier, mine and my girlfriend's barriers are mostly having to do with drugs or whatever, but it's helping us here to uh, get our minds back in shape for the real world. And um, because that's mainly what it is, period, with drugs is you get, your brain turns into mush and you need time away from the hectic push of life to to get it firm and yeah, on the right track again. And yeah. and what is your drug of choice? Um, not of choice, more of uh, just how it's worked out. This is meth. set up these two greenhouses, 8 by 10 We've got a whole bunch of tomato plants, and um, James and his partner agreed to um, look after those and have done so. Yeah, I, uh, it's been mainly trial and error. I, uh, was only watering them once every two days when you're supposed to be water when it got hotter and you're supposed to be watering once every day so they dried up a little bit plus the roots were getting in shock when uh, they were hitting the sides of the pots a little too late so I had to transplant them and that created more shock so but there's some still kicking every time you step foot in the greenhouse you're, just, you're supposed to close uh, the door behind you and I left it open and uh, that's what the uh, the little bites look like on the side. With everything we've planted, we've done the garden two years now, last year, you know, there's, uh, we have to learn, we have to learn yeah. about gardening and that's one of the nice things about it out here. We can say to James and his partner that, uh, hey guys, that's yours. If you have any questions, let us know. Water them, take care of them, do whatever you need to do. Let us know if there's something we need, we can do to help you out. And we spread the jobs out. Um, we have people on the fruit trees and people that are helping with landscaping and people that do maintenance and he'll also help us with light maintenance. These jobs are to help people fill their day with um, an accomplishment yeah. or accomplishments. Instead of waking up every day and having nothing to do, we ask residents to pick something, pick something of interest and um, pursue it. So um, those three things, maintain self, unit, and contribute are ones from a distance we're always looking at. And if we can meet those needs, we're doing very well with someone. There is a continuum of care that we like to use at the Thunderbird. And if you can get these, these things down, you're ready to take a bigger picture, a bigger step, um, make more of a commitment to um, advance professional supports. And we ended up getting stuck at living at the, one of the drug dealers in town. Oh, so Deb one day was, uh, some things happened and Deb ended up going to mental health or whatever and they led her to Paul. And she went and seen Paul and we set up a meeting and Paul brought we us out, out here. That's what yeah, we needed. Paul brought us to put out here and 
we ended up getting a place here. Like we were so happy, we both started. I crying. bawled as soon as that. We song. both cried. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful and cozy yeah. and ours, and I just started to cry in the moments. And we so <laughs> you know, that's how we ended up here. Moving everywhere, like living everywhere, not knowing where we're going to be splitting our head down, and yeah, yeah. you know, we were hooked on crystal meth for yeah, six geez, years. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible. It's the worst drug in the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's a terrible, terrible, years. terrible drug. Yeah, it's a terrible it just problem. takes people and ruins their life. Yeah. Everybody it touches, it ruins their life. First time in 11 years I've been able to go for over a month without touching chemicals. Uh, in 11 years I haven't gone for over a month without touching them. Mm -hmm. And it's because I decided that I can't it's exist like this anymore. I have to go back to living, not existing. <laughs> We've done negative police contacts six months prior to the Thunderbird and six months after. We had 50 negative police contacts before the Thunderbird and when they were housed at the Thunderbird, 24. So we cut that in half. And a negative police contact is um, it's a significant interaction. I'm a burglar by trade, but I got no work. Have you lived in like a place like this before? Uh, I don't think so. No, you can't remember. No, <laughs> I, uh, you got no memory. So Gordy's been with us uh, maybe a year or so. Yeah, I guess so. And then can we talk about your challenges? Oh yeah, yeah. Why we support you? <laughs> so Gordy has memory issues, and we don't know what yet. So for years it's just been neglected and left. Um, now that he's here with us, we're following through with appointments and specialists and scans. And yeah. Boy, is he seeing people. And we're trying to figure out um, what's going on with his I figured it was an accident, not figure. I don't know. So um, he does well, but he forgets and sometimes he gets quite frustrated because he can't remember. And often he'll come to me and he'll ask, what day is day? I don't have a clue what day is. What's going on this day? And do I shop today? And you can tell there's a sense of loss. He doesn't know. And I may have heard it four times today. Right? So I, we're patient like with day. each other. I get lost too. We both need secretaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey? Right? My right. secretary. My secretary. Gordy and I need a secretary. Keep yes. us yes. organized. That's why we keep That's forgetting. That's what you need. So Deborah takes care of the fruit trees, her and her partner Tim, yeah. they committed to taking care of the fruit trees. We have different residents that take on certain jobs. Yeah. This is the fruit trees, so they're going to make sure they're always watered, they're going to make sure that they're taken care of, and if there's any issues, they can come to us. Yep. And uh, they get to pick their jobs, pick what you want to do. Yeah, whatever you feel comfortable with. Yeah, you know? yeah for sure. We had problems with, we had big caterpillars and we had webs and we got a bit of blight, a little bit of rust, and this product will take care of all that. Um, you just have to read the instructions on the mixing quantities and when to spray and what to spray. This is what was happening. We were getting like blight and sort of a mangy looking thing here. But that's our new growth. So apparently what we're doing is working. So that's what we're doing with the fruit trees. And when we get apple pies, you're welcome to help. Because <laughs> eventually we will get an apple. 24 throughout the property. These fruit trees are donated to United Way. They give us money first year in operation, this year in operation, and uh, we hope in five years or so to have an abundance of fruit. Well, I noticed the residents and the visitors have been enjoying the fruit, yes. you know, so that's okay. I just hope they remember to wash it, because I've we've sprayed it. Yeah. Are you coming to the resident meeting? We'll be at the meeting. Okay, what's the date today, the 8th? 10th. Yeah. Monday was the 8th, Tuesday was the 9th, and Wednesday was the 10th. I cut hair, but I now have a new set of clippers. Okay, so Lori, <laughs> Lori cuts hair. Maybe she should sample and do mine before you get a I chance to look at it. I think I've done just about everybody's <laughs> Gordy, no, look at that <laughs> tail. Yeah, I want to listen, uh, Gordy. Look at that hair. It'll always grow back. Thanks. Okay, are you doing it for a cost? Are you doing it volunteering? Or is it a mix? Yeah. How do you want to work? Volunteer, unless it's um, if they if they 
have color and half cost. Why don't you do that? And it's half off. How much is the haircut? Oh, but so six bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's half volunteer. Half mm -hmm. I put that in the meeting minutes. <laughs> nice. Okay, good. And again, that's where um, just want to make sure that everybody's room is safe and well. And maybe there's some maintenance in there that comes out that we need to be doing that's maybe not getting done. And uh, it's for health and safety reasons. So we're in the social cafe, the residents call it the Phoenix Room. Uh, we have sections here that we do group, there's an addictions group that happens in this corner. There's three computers, internet, uh, residents are able to connect with family, friends, it draws people out of their rooms. What I'm finding with the clientele is they often go underground and they're alone and depressed and they get a lot of alone time. So having a space like this where they can come and join hang out, very important. It's a great multi-purpose room, and it is needed. Well, I'm Kevin, uh, I'm uh, from Toronto, and uh, I came here to Hope BC because I joined the Katimovic program. It's, pro it's a Canadian youth-based program uh, for uh, Canadian youth range 17 to 21 to uh, volunteer in uh, communities across the country. What I wanted to do for when I came here in Hope was to, you know, help to benefit a community, whether it be at large or something small like here at the Thunderbird. So this is Zach. Zach is with Katimovic. He's a Katimovic student. Where are you from, Zach? I'm from Quebec. He's 17 years old. He'll be working here at the Thunderbird for six months, learning about homelessness, our project. Um, yeah, it's going to be good. So he's hard at work. Cleaning, organizing, there's always things to do that. Something that I've learned is uh, don't be afraid of people. Go up, go up to them, talk to them. They are nicer than you think. <laughs> people would automatically assume that, you know, going into a place like this, people would be probably been antisocial when in fact that's not always the case. And it's nice to, uh, you know, interact with people you wouldn't imagine to have interacted with. Go for it. Okay, so this is Buddy. So Buddy's four years old, Golden Retriever, and he comes to work with me um, pretty much every day, Monday to Friday. Comes into the office, we meet with clientele, he comes out here to the center. And his role is to perform dog therapy services. Residents attach to him very easily, which allows me to attach to that residence very easily. They'll often go to Buddy first and say hi to him and some have taken a real interest. So uh, we utilize the pet therapy model out here. And um, yeah, he roams the three acres, enjoying the attention while giving. Yeah, a lot of the people here, or a lot of people that have multiple barriers that we're trying to house have no um, connection to other people, physical contact. Right, where they can feel and grab something and care for something and it's not like to be a negative for them. So he performs that role. When they come and touch him and pet him just like I do now, they get a need fulfilled. Another reason we do utilize the Thunderbird and have created the Thunderbird is for that, that we can give people more chances than the typical rental marketplace. And we give them more chances to change. We give them more chances to learn and we try and model and teach rather than punish and evict. And the guy that committed suicide, which had nothing to do with us, and you know, a couple people died of natural cause here. Yeah, you know, all the sensationalized yeah. things. Yeah. 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 The same as with the <laughs> thing. Like, you know, people, oh, the Thunderbird's a bad place, a guy killed <laughs> But it's a one incident. People yeah, like, you, know, you know, one guy pissed off. You know, one guy did it, right? That couldn't even hold up a beer can to prevent like, them. Yeah, like one bad apple in the bunch. Of, the, the, there's no way in shape that any of the other people here are anywhere like that guy. Yeah. No, you know, it was an incident. The outside per perception, right? But we yeah. get blamed, you know, put as a bad there. Thunderbird yeah. because of that, right? We're all part no. of that same no. package because we live at the same place. And it's hard when you're an addict. I've been a cocaine addict, needle man. Yeah. Not now, but I've been clean off that for a few years now, thanks to this place. This place, this place allowed me the room to breathe, and I got off. Mm -hmm. You know, 
I finally got off the shit, right? Thanks to this place. I know there's still lots of improvements and, and good things to be done and had, but um, I am content living here. You say we had five habits, we managed to kick four. Yeah. We still, you know, we good. still smoke a pot. We're both old hippies. And since we've been here, in the four years we've been here, this is what's benefited us. Yeah. Our life has changed tremendously. Oh, big time. Big time. To the good. Up the ladder. To the good, right? Uh, all them hardcore drugs have been dealt with, and we're fucking really on the upper level of it. Not totally 100% quit, you know, but way better. We've slipped a couple times in four years, but we're you can never compared, totally we're not to what we've done, we're not doing nothing really compared to what our life was like. So, this place has helped us right. establish priorities and sort of clean up our act and keep it together and um, help out in a community setting, which is really kind of nice. It can be a pain in the butt sometimes, but it's free entertainment, and if you, if you handle it right, it's not a problem, you know. People are and that's like experience. basically that's how we ended up coming here, and like that's sort of what's happened in a nutshell with us. In this type of programming, we have 25 to 30 residents out here. It doesn't operate without other supports coming in. So you have myself, outreach worker. We have uh, Mike. He's a support worker on site, but we also have legal advocacy coming out and supporting the clients, Aboriginal mental. We have a nurse practitioner that comes to the Thunder Group and she'll meet with the clients that otherwise don't have supports for medical needs. Okay, so one of the reasons um, we want to do this type of documentary is to educate people on what it's about. I honestly feel that people don't understand where homelessness comes from, um, the type of people we work with, um, the challenges they have, so the educated. I know when people think of nursing, if you were to get into the field of nursing, uh, people would know exactly what to expect. As a nurse, you're showing up, you're going to deal with people that are sick and in the hospital or wherever the environment may be. There's an understanding. When it comes to homelessness, um, I think there's a gray area there where people don't understand the challenges. Um, when I show up to work, I know exactly what to expect. I, and I, I need to, we need to share that with people. We need to share that a vast majority of people are limited with social skills and life skills, mental health ability, stability. They come with a variety of barriers all mixed in one. And um, that is my work. And I took this flashlight, one of those flashlights, and cut the part off where the lights are, and I fastened it inside here, right? And put the cable onto it, and I have this battery pack that has four batteries in it, and I hook the switch up to it, right? And boom. What are some of your hobbies? Leather work. Leather work? Yeah. Yep. All right, what do you like doing with leather? Uh, I stamp it, and I got nothing to do, but it's whenever the guy comes out here from uh, town, he teaches me. Well, I stamp them as leather tools. Okay. Yeah, stamp them. And it's telling me none. It's very light. It costs money, but not that much. I've been doing for 10 months. Me, I look for change. Jade is green, eh? Well, sometimes there's lots of big piece like this. How do you sleep on that? Isn't it uncomfortable? Or? Oh, no, oh, no, you don't feel this. You don't feel nothing like this. There's some rock like this. It's nice there. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of nice stuff here. So we give them opportunities, but there's a whole world out there of opportunities. Between the world and the Thunderbird, we hope that they do pick something, and maybe we can help along the way. That, that's what helps biggest, is because the world, you need your brain muscle to be working good, so you need to exercise it before you step back in. And so, all the little things around here help the brain muscle exercise and get back into it. Build that foundation. Yeah.